here we'll look at special factorizations. These are ones that are a little bit easier as long as we can pick up on the pattern. So the first example, x squared minus a squared factors into x minus a, x plus a. So the idea is if we have two terms that are both squared and a minus sign in between it, we can factor it. For example, x squared minus 9. We know that 9 is 3 squared, so we can write this as x minus 3, x plus 3. x to the fourth minus 16. Well, we know that x squared squared is x to the fourth, and 4 squared is 16. So I have x squared minus 4 and x squared plus 4. And we can actually take this one step further. This first term here, x squared and 4, well, we have an x and 2 squared is 4. So I have x minus 2, x plus 2, and then an x squared plus 4. We cannot separate this last piece because we see that there's not a negative sign in between. Next is perfect squares. These are a little bit harder to pick up on. We have x squared plus 2ax plus a squared, or x squared minus 2ax plus a squared. So the idea here is we need to be able to realize that the first and the last term are perfect squares, and the middle term are those two terms times two. For example, x squared plus 8x plus 16. So we have an x at the beginning, 16 is a perfect square, in particular it is 4 squared, and then 4 times 2 times x does give us the 8. So this would be x plus 4 squared. So these are trickier to pick up on and do take some practice. However, once we get into other methods of factoring, these can be factored using other methods. Another example, 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. We see that 4 and 1 are both perfect squares. In addition, these are the perfect squares of 2 and 1, and 2 times 2 times 1 is 4. So this would be 2x minus 1 squared. The last one, we see that 16 and 9 are both perfect squares, which are 4 and 3. 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24. So this one works, 4x plus 3 squared. We also have the sum and difference of cubes. Unfortunately, these cannot be factored using the methods that we'll learn, so it is important to recognize these formulas. So x cubed plus a cubed, if both of our terms are perfect squares, we have x plus a times x squared minus ax plus a squared. If we change that to a negative, x cubed minus a cubed, that's x minus a times x squared plus ax plus a squared. Remembering the signs, we can use the acronym SOAP for same, opposite, always positive. The first sign will be the same as the sign in the problem, the second one is the opposite, and then the last is always positive. So my examples, x cubed minus 27. We can see that these are perfect cubes. In particular, 3 cubed is 27. So this would be x minus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 9. The second one, x cubed plus 1, these are also perfect squares, so we would get x plus 1, x squared minus x plus 1. 